My name is Sean Reed. I am a data science instructor at Galvanize. Uh, my background actually was in physics, so I did an undergrad in physics and I did a master's in economics. And I got to data science because I always had data around that needed some sciencing, and so I figured I might as well be official about it. So at Galvanize, we teach Python as part of our tool set, as the primary part of our tool set. So we do Python and the Linux and AWS kind of infrastructure. But we definitely hear the question all the time, um, should I learn Python or R at the beginning of data science? Python and R, um, those are definitely the two most popular things people use in data science. Um, Python is a more traditional kind of programming language, and R was originally designed specifically for statistics, but it's kind of branched out into a more general purpose language since then. Python, uh, in terms of data science, is used in similar ways as in R in terms of like going through, uh, loading data in, cleaning data, kind of doing visualization, doing analysis, and um, and graphing and predictions. Python is definitely a general purpose uh, language, and so there are lots of pockets of developers who are working in different parts of Python, um, inside data science as well as outside. Um, and that makes Python easier to integrate into production sorts of systems because there are already people who are using Python in those systems or uh, developers that know how to integrate Python into those systems. R really developed in academia and the usage was primarily for building stats packages and visualizing it for researchers and so there is a huge amount of statistical um, packages available in R, you know, much more than is available in Python right now. People in Python were sad that R had such nice tools and they wanted some for themselves. Um, so now you actually have the ability to actually import our functions and our objects into Python when you're using it. So it's becoming less and less like Python versus R and much more like, you know, use whichever bits make sense and whoever has the best stuff. It, it, it definitely used to be that uh, companies did not use R in production. So like, and, and that was mostly true for the data science part of Python as well. Like or the original packages were developed for like single researcher kind of working on their own, on their own particular problems and doing their visualizations and things. Um, kind of now where software and data science has progressed, that's all team based. You have to be on GitHub, you have to be sharing code. Uh, and you have to be able to kind of push your insights that you build with your data science models into production. And so that's definitely easier to do in Python than in R, and more people know how to do that in Python than in R, but it's still being done in R because there are just great programmers who work in every language. Our students do final projects, and they'll typically do that completely in Python. A lot of times students will actually build a website using Flask, um, and they'll kind of hook up their machine learning system directly to that. For example, a student did a pet recommender system, like you kind of would type in what types of qualities you like, it was particularly around dogs, so what kind of qualities and dogs you were looking for, and then it would try to find dogs in local shelters that kind of match those requirements. In terms of trying to find a job now, I think you have to be foremost in data science as well, a good programmer. Like working in Python, you really need to be able to kind of use that whole traditional software engineering and computer science um, toolkit. And I think that's the toolkit that people ultimately want. That's so, so when we do at Galvanize, we try to integrate that toolkit. Um, into the course so people can make sure when they come out of here they're also strong programmers overall. So there are definitely a lot of different types of jobs that you can get um, coming out with a data science background. I mean you have data scientists, you also have sort of business analysts uh, who come out. You also have things more specialized like data engineering. Um, also people do particularly AI and or machine learning when they come out depending on what their background was before they came here. 
For beginner data scientists, I would definitely say focus on Python in the beginning. Uh, and I think you're going to learn kind of good object-oriented skills and you'll learn about how programming language in the whole are structured. Um, and you'll be able to use kind of the ecosystem around pandas and other tooling that, that exists. I think that learning Python first makes you closer, leaves you closer to the ecosystem of programming because I think data science as a whole is moving much and more towards software engineering um, environment as a whole. So I think learning Python is best for beginners. So a galvanizer student has to come in and they, they have a Python assessment and a stats assessment, um, an assessment that deals a little bit with SQL. So you have to have studied one of my favorite websites I've seen is called Snakeify, um, and I don't know who owns it, but it just looks really fun, and it has uh, nice exercises, and I think it gives you, uh, like if you go through their whole site, it seems like they give you a good sort of grounding on, on how Python works. One other tool in terms of uh, Python resources I like is, is uh, something called the Whirlwind Tour of Python. And that's actually a free PDF and there's also GitHub repos associated with it. And it kind of gives you a really quick tour about what Python is and how it works. And then it kind of leads you into the data science part towards the end. Galvanize also has a particular data science prep course. So if you go to galvanize.com and it's data-science-prep and you can kind of sign up for free and you have also some ability to get some mentored prep in addition to the free stuff if you, if you so choose. So definitely my advice is, you know, learn Python first, um, get really good at it. And as you go along after the program, you're always going to continue learning. Definitely learn R, definitely learn how to read R, definitely learn how to read books with R, um, and learn how to use some of its packages as well.